I think for so many people, especially here for us in the Detroit area, we are so focused on the automotive industry that we forget just how important the agricultural industry is to the state of Michigan. Um, there are more than 52,000 farms here in Michigan, and agriculture is like a $101 billion industry for the state. And with that, we want to bring in Ernie Birchmeyer for the Michigan Farm Bureau. You guys have been doing such a good job at trying to navigate this crazy pandemic. It's been a roller coaster ride. Where do things stand right now for so many of the farmers here in the state of Michigan, Ernie? Sure. Well, first of all, good morning. It's great to be with you. And agriculture is actually a $104 billion industry here in the state of Michigan. Uh, we continue to enhance, continue to grow. And, you know, all of our consumers uh, here in the state of Michigan, outside of our state, and really across the world, very seldom do we uh, think about where our food comes <coughs> from or if it's going to be there. But our farmers work diligently on a daily basis to make sure that we have the safest, most abundant and wholesome food supply in the world with lots of choices. And we're very fortunate to have that. And uh, uh, agriculture's number two or number three industry in the state, uh, depending upon the year and how good of a year the tourism industry has, um, the two of us kind of battle back and forth for that second slot. But our farmers uh, continue to farm as they do on a daily basis. It's an exciting time of the year because if you travel to the rural countryside, you'll see tractors in the fields. Uh, that's this year's crop being planted. And we've been challenged a bit by the weather, uh, certainly the last couple of weeks, but crops are going in the ground. Our greenhouse operations are in full bloom. Great opportunity for you to go out and buy bedding plants uh, when the weather warms up or flowers for your, for your yard or your porch and uh, just an opportunity to buy lots of great uh, wholesome agricultural products that we have in Michigan and plant your gardens because we have lots of bedding plants and vegetables to be sold as well. So our farmers are putting crops on the ground. Things are blooming in the greenhouse and uh, the trees are challenged. Hopefully they'll be okay and we'll have an abundant fruit crop later this summer and this fall. So Ernie, if I could uh, just have you think back to this time last year, what was it like? A year ago right now, it was, it was challenging. I told people it was one of the more challenging times in, in my career at Michigan Farm Bureau. Um, I was uh, actually doing five to seven media interviews a day uh, regarding the impact of COVID uh, uh, on farming and on agriculture and the food supply. If you think about it, a year ago right now, we were dealing with market disruptions. Most people in our state had never seen an empty grocery store shelf, and we were dealing with some of that uh, because we were having uh, challenges in the processing industry, challenges in the distribution industry, and people were panic buying at that time, filling up their freezers. We were also dealing with a year ago, uh, you know, some shutdowns in businesses due to government restrictions and the inability to buy some of those bedding plants that we talked about. And, uh, uh, you know, our members went to work and uh, worked with uh, leaders in Michigan to allow some of that to happen. We had a lot going on in a very short amount of time. It was rapid fire. It was crisis management at its finest. But at the same time, our farmers were out farming. They were taking care of the livestock. They were putting crops in the ground. Um, they were working to protect the environment. They were growing this next year's food supply and food crop, not just for their livestock, but for all of our consumers as well. And uh, that's the beauty of agriculture is that we keep moving forward because we know we have to uh, produce the food and fiber for our consumers, uh, not only here in Michigan, but outside of the state as well. So it was rapid fire. It was challenging. Uh, some days frustrating, some days exciting. OK, because you never knew what was going to happen. But the steady and the constant is that our farmers were farming. I, one thing, though, um, I think Americans, ha they were forced to stop and think about their food supply and where it was coming from. So you hope that going into this year, they are really supporting local farmers even more so this year than years in the past, because we also know one of the troubling spots last year around this time, our neighboring states were more open than what we, we were. So that kind of, you know, also hit that supply chain as well. But um, now that you feel like you have a chance to breathe, 
Is it business as usual or not quite there yet? Yeah, I would say, yeah, business as usual, but with cautious optimism. We know we're going to continue to deal with challenges, and we don't know what the next COVID is going to be. Let's hope there isn't another COVID and we don't have to go through another challenging situation like this last year. But our farmers deal with crisis you know, ongoing. We are in a worldwide market. We have to remember that 95 or 96 percent of the world's population lives outside of the United States, and we are constantly challenged by international trade issues or energy issues, uh, leadership issues between countries, um, and those, those impact our farmers and their markets on a daily basis. Right now, for instance, oh, and the weather, let's not forget about that, uh, because the weather is impacting uh, crop availability and crop progress in South America, which has had a dramatic impact on, on crop prices here in the United States. Uh, our corn and soybean prices have, uh, have gone up significantly, uh, and that's because worldwide demand is good. China is actually demanding more corn and soybeans to rebuild their swine population and pork production in that country. You have weather-related issues in South America that are impacting their production capability, and there are only so many commodities worldwide. So there is an instance where we're in a worldwide market. It does impact our market prices, and we need to continue to work through all of that um, as, as we deal with issues. So we move forward steadily and with progress, but we're always dealing with outside influences. You're listening to 89.3 WBLD Orchard Lake, 88.1 WBFH Bloomfield Hills. And we're speaking with Ernie Birchmeyer here on the Megacast. He is with the Michigan Farm Bureau. With that, Ernie, I do, from the outside, it feels like you have a friend when it comes to um, Debbie Stabenow and her legislation pushed in DC and trying to support <laughs> the farm industry. Uh, I believe she has a new bill that she is pushing forward to try to give you more flexibility over cover, or, or is it cover crops? Cover crops. What exactly cover is crops. that? What are we talking about here? I'm, I, I'm not a farmer. I'll be lucky if I can uh, get my herbs to grow this uh, season. That's okay. Let's, uh, uh, this is all, all relative to, uh, uh, to climate change, to carbon sequestration, to how we deal with continuing to protect the environment from an agricultural standpoint, and how our farmers potentially, uh, uh, how our farmers play into that equation. It's important to note that our farmers around the state are, are, are really the original environmentalists. If we don't take care of the environment that surrounds us, we don't have a farm to farm and a farm to pass on to our next generation. But we all know the amount of discussion that climate change, greenhouse gases, carbon sequestration are getting right now. Uh, our farmers have the ability to sequester a lot of carbon on their farm operations because of the plants uh, that we grow, the forest land that we have on our farm, and yes, putting cover crops uh, on those fields during the winter time to help with soil erosion and potentially sequester more carbon. And uh, Senator Stabenow is working to put together, has put together a bipartisan piece of legislation that calls on voluntary based incentive driven programs uh, that are based upon scientific, uh, uh, on sound science. And uh, isn't it great if we could implement a program such as that, that re would reward farmers for additional environmental protection uh, based upon those principles. So uh, um, she realizes the need to work together and uh, working together, we can solve a lot more problems than we can by just one side or the other going it alone. So with that, Ernie, I'm wondering, why has this been a sticking point until now? I don't necessarily say it's a sticking point because our farmers have been doing this all along. We've implemented uh, uh, environmental practice such as practices such as uh, no-till uh, planting here in the state of Michigan, where we can go in and plant the, the crops without necessarily tilling up the soil, because when you till up the soil, you release um, greenhouse gases. So we have the ability to do that. We have reduced tillage measures that we put in place we have an agriculture environmental assurance program here in Michigan uh, that puts together all of the environmental requirements for farmers uh, to meet in the state into one great package that also helps to reduce uh, fertilizer use, water use, 
helps to protect the environment more. So our farmers have been doing this for a very long time. It's just that it's getting more discussion at the federal level now because of the heightened awareness that's been brought about uh, by the new administration. I uh, will say with that, Ernie, we're talking with the Ernie Birchmeyer. He's with the Michigan Farm Bureau. Uh, Ernie, is so many industries right now, they're already struggling. And the focus is on the employee shortage um, that they're going through. Do you anticipate that's going to be a big issue for farmers as well? Labor is always a challenge for agriculture. Uh, has been for quite some time. Let's face it, these are jobs that uh, you know are physical in nature. You know, a lot of our fruits and vegetables are hand harvested. Um, our cows, you know, need to have uh, need to be milked on a daily basis, and our livestock need to be taken care of. And uh, we're constantly looking for, you know, employees on farm operations. Ron, if you look across the state, you'll see help wanted signs everywhere. It's not just in agriculture. It's uh, it's on local business doors in your communities. It's in uh, manufacturing. Lots of restaurants, small business owners. They're all looking for labor right now. We need to make sure that we have a reliable uh, workforce in agriculture, a program that allows us to bring workers in when needed and um, return home when needed, uh, but to meet the needs of our farmers while they grow the crops that our consumers eat. Uh, there are lots of issues uh, swirling, you know, regarding expanded unemployment, you know, and the need for folks to go back to work. So we need to find the balance that works that allows our businesses and our farms to operate uh, but still allows those that need to stay home actually need to to stay home. So uh, labor is a real issue, and uh, we 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 deal with it every year because our crops need to be planted, harvested, and processed. So with that, Ernie, we don't want to get into the political side of this, but if we can just talk about the realistic side, we know around this time last year the big issue was trying to get enough workers in, and we know many of the workers that help our farmers are migrant workers. And we're talking about, um, you know, getting them COVID uh, tested. But now this year, everything is focused around the vaccine. But we know a lot of people in the undocumented world, they're concerned about getting the vaccine. Uh, but it's a different time. It's a different administration. What do you anticipate this season's going to look like compared to last year? Well, first of all, I am not our labor expert, so I'll I'll say that right up front. But, you know, we have a program in Michigan Farm Bureau called Great Lakes Ag Labor Services, where we bring in H-2A workers from other countries to fill some of those voids uh, on farm operations where needed. There are strict protocol that are put in place on those farm operations uh, for those for the workers to deal with relative to testing. Uh, relative to vaccination protocol, if that's what the farm decides and the workers want. We have to remember we still have, you know, individual rights in this country that need to be protected. But our but our farmers around the state are very diligent in making sure that their workers are protected, that they're safe, that they're fairly compensated, they have uh, they have good places to live, and that they're well taken care of. So we we follow that very, very close and we'll continue to do so because if again, if we don't have workers our farmers can't be successful either. So the farmer and the worker need to both be uh, both be happy and satisfied in the situation in order for everything to work well together. Ronnie, we'll continue to deal with regulatory issues and government involvement, if you will, and uh, challenges along the way. That's why I said earlier, we're better off working together to resolve those problems rather than one side doing it by themselves. Sitting down and having collaboration is often an art that's been forgotten about, especially lately. We need to continue to do more of that so that our entire state, including our agricultural community, can move forward. Those are such wise words, Ernie. Uh, I think you should run for uh, elected office on that platform. Ernie Birchmeyer with us here on the Megacast. He's with the Michigan Farm Bureau. And again, our apologies to getting to you a little bit late, but uh, anything that uh, maybe I haven't touched on that you wanna share as well before we say goodbye? Sure, I always encourage, and Ronnie, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to extend the invitation to you again uh, to go out and visit a farm and for your listeners to go visit a farm and get to know where their food supply comes from. You know, whether you want to buy local or you want to buy, uh, you know, from, from some of the larger retail outlets we have in Michigan, uh, number one, isn't it great that we have choices? Uh, number two, isn't it great that it's affordable? And number three, isn't it great that Michigan is second in diversity of commodity production 
meaning we grow more commodities and different types of food in Michigan than any other state in the country except California. So we have a great diversity of agriculture in Michigan. If you start in Southwest Michigan and travel up the West side, you'll find an abundance of fruit orchards, livestock production, vegetable production, uh, all the way from the Southwest corner of the state to Traverse City, uh, which is a leading region in the country for tart cherries. Our upper peninsula is filled with lumber and cattle and dairy production. You come back down the state, you've got beef production, crop production, sugar beet production, and those sugar beets are processed, you know, in, in Bay City for sugar that's shipped across the Midwest. Our thumb is full of a variety of, of crops and livestock and, and dairy as well, uh, all the way from the tip of uh, top of Michigan through the southern part of the state. We're very fortunate. I encourage people to get to know where their food comes from. Make your decisions based upon you know, what you learn from a farmer rather than what you learn from social media, so to speak, and uh, uh, be appreciative of the food supply that we have. It's so true, Ernie. And with that, too, if you go to the farmer's market, you go to Eastern Market, Oakland County, any farmer's market, take the time to speak uh, with the farmers because we know they are directly involved in what they're selling there. And what lessons all of us have learned throughout this pandemic. And hopefully the silver lining is that we appreciate our local farmers as well. Ernie, it's always great having you with us. Great to be with you. And again, let me know when you want to visit a farm. We'll make sure we uh, uh, we get you out to see several of them in your area. I will definitely make that happen this summer. So thank you again, Ernie.